as UFC fighters, we are a different type of human beings. I think it takes heart, it takes dedication, it takes sacrifice. Sometimes it takes dreams from other aspects of your life. I think it takes a person to be humble as well, to know that in defeat you can come back and to come back even stronger. I'd say we are modern day gladiators. It's a way of life where they lock the doors behind you and it's just you and your opponent and a ref in between you. That's some type of crazy, but that's my crazy and I love it. My typical training camp schedule is twice a day, Monday through Friday. Typically I do wrestling Monday, Wednesday, Friday, striking three or four times a week, and jiu-jitsu two or three times a week. Sometimes being mentally tough wins you the fight. I'm in the top 10 again. Uh, I'm excited to get closer to that top five. How you feel, T? I'm good. I think that we're all in here to be the best, to have a world title, to have a belt around our waist. And at the end of the day, only one person can win. Only one person can be the champion. I just want to go and fight as, you know, as much as I can and get that title shot one day and then reign as champion. Hi, Mom. How'd your training go? It went really good. I love you. I want to see you. I want to support you. I believe in you. And you got this. Thanks. I miss you. Growing up, I had a rough childhood. My mom and dad had a very abusive relationship, both physically and verbally. So my mom divorced my dad finally when I was about three or four. And she struggled. Um, she really did. She had three kids, all under the age of four. And by the time I was five, my sister was six, my mom thought it was a good idea to bring us into a local martial arts school. I loved every minute of it. My sister completely hated it. She never went back for another class, and I stayed in it for 12 years. It really gave me an outlet, especially, you know, coming from a divorced family that had just been split up. I didn't know where it would bring me one day, but I knew that it was somewhere I wanted to be. I saw some MMA, and I was like, wow, this is cool. I can do that. And then lo and behold, during that time, Invicta came around, the all-female promotion. That was like the holy grail of fighting for women at the time, the best of the best. I was like, one day I'm gonna be there. When I look back on the beginnings of my martial arts career, it's like a different type of feeling when you get in there and when they, you know, ring that first bell, I don't hear anything else. I'm super focused on that chick in front of me. I'm coming to Wreck House. I mean, wow, her, her nickname is the Tiny Tornado, so punches and kicks are coming at you all the time. You know, look out. It was fresh, her passion for competition, her passion to get her hand raised, her passion to make her people proud, her coaches prouder. She showed everyone what she could do. The idea of being in the UFC one day was never there. Women weren't in the UFC, women weren't uh, on TV fighting or anything like that. 2013 comes, the UFC opens up its doors. Ronda Rousey was the woman to do it for us. They started with 135 pound weight class. I was like, wow, I can't do that. I don't even weigh 125 pounds, but we'll wait. So lo and behold, I'm watching TV one night in my bed, get a phone call from 702, uh, that's Las Vegas. I answer the phone, it was Dana White. On this season of The Ultimate Fighter. Saying, hey, we're having The Ultimate Fighter season 20. It's gonna be the introduction of the 115 pound weight class. You guys are the baddest 16 women in the world at this weight class. The person that walks out of this gym, the winner, at the end of this season will be the world champion. The reality hit where I was able to possibly have this as a career, then I was like, oh, I can be seen by millions of people around the world and showcase my skills and my God-given talents. 
I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It changed my life that night and there. Coming off the Ultimate Fighter, I had all these fans already. So when I had my first fight, there were all these fans looking forward to that fight, cheering me on, giving me messages of hope and inspiration and that I inspire them. I feel like I was on top of my game. I was putting out good wins. Uh, I had experience, I think, at that point, only one loss. And I was feeling good about myself. Then my first uh, loss was Jessica Andrade. Next, I get another champion, Joanna. <laughs> Again, lose on decision. Then comes Whaley, a new dark horse. Nobody knew anything about her. I knew nothing about her. I fight her. I lose. Fourth fight, Marina. I definitely hit rock bottom after my fourth loss in a row. That like hit me hard. You know, for so long, I was top of my division, top five. I was beating contenders, beating people who they thought I wouldn't beat. And then I just like, one, two, three, four. That hurt me so much. It made me question my worth in the division, question my value to the UFC, and just question my abilities. I didn't want anybody to know that I was dealing with depression. Growing up in the family that I had and being in the environment that I was definitely hurt me as a child and it still hurts me today. So I've dealt with issues with confidence and self-love and my worthiness. I don't know, they call me the tiny tornado, but at the end of the day, I'm just Tisha. <laughs> Sorry. Some days I thought I didn't belong here, that I thought that things were wrong with me and like, why is life not working out the way I want it to work out? But now I'm not scared anymore. I'm not perfect, I'm still not perfect. I still have days where I sit there and cry on my closet floor, but the next day I do get up. You ask any athlete, they're gonna say that the mental aspect is, you know, 90, 95% important. She has taken a lot of time to work on the mental aspect, and that's the true sign of a champion. With Tisha Torres, it's always the same thing. It's Tisha versus Tisha. So the fights that she's lost has been Tisha beating Tisha. As long as she's in a good headspace, I truly believe that she could be a world champion. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, good look good. Headed into the last fight, her mind frame was into it. We're not gonna not lose it, we're gonna win it. Tisha with a nice combination. Ah, the speed! Torres looking primed and primal tonight. Tisha, tiny tornado, Torres! In the past, I used to fight for the people around me. I fought for my coaches, my family. I don't think that was the right idea. I think I needed to fight for myself first. I think I'll continue to do that for my fights to come. I know what I'm facing is a tough opponent, and I'm ready to give her a fight. I have a fuel inside of me that I didn't have before. I'm fighting for the five-year-old self. She's a badass chick now. She turned into one glorified woman who goes out there and kicks some ass. At one point, I did have a low, but I know at the end of the day, I am one of the greatest fighters in the world, and that one day I will be crowned the greatest fighter at 115.